Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. This Halloween look is inspired by my favorite DC villain, which is Poison Ivy. She is Harley Quinn's best friend and she is all about mother nature and plants and she's just sexy and she slays and I love her. So I will be showing you how I created this look today. First things first, even if you wash your face, I would like it if you went over it with at least a makeup remover wipe. And I'm just going to be applying this Aveeno Daily Moisturizing Lotion um, to prime the look. Um, I always suggest that you moisturize before any kind of makeup, even if it's just a basic look. Um, and I'm just going to be putting that all over my face and I'm going to be waiting for it to dry before I apply anything. Um, and I'm just going to evenly put that on my face. We're going to be starting off with the eyes first. I always recommend if you're cosplaying or just playing dress up, um, if you're going to do a dramatic eye, do the eyes first. So that way, if anything gets messed up, you don't have to remove foundation or anything like that. Um, and I use the NYX eyeshadow primer and I think the color champagne. And I'm pretty much just going to be priming my lids with this. And I'm just going to be going all over with my fingers. And I'm going to be using the Wet n Wild Temporary Solutions Palette. If you plan on being Poison Ivy and you don't want to spend a lot of money on makeup, like let's say you don't have green, this palette has all the colors you would be needing for this look. And it's only about $5. But it is a limited edition palette. Um, I do like to use the eyeshadow sticks that come with um, the makeup palettes. Um, I find it a lot easier and because they're so small and sharp, it's a lot easier for me to get into those corners of my eyes. Um, I'm just going to be using the green that comes in this palette to apply that on my brows and I'm just going to be gently patting that on. Um, and I do recommend that you prime your lids um, no matter what you're planning to do. And I'm just going to try to sharpen that edge as I go along um, because I will be you know, trying to make it more of a, a cat eye effect. And as you can see, Bananas was thrashing in the background. <laughs> and using the Sephora makeup palette, um, I will be using the green that comes in there. And with the crown, crease, and shadow brush, I'm just going to be adding on the darker green that comes in that palette and putting it on my under eye lid. Um, I'm just going to be placed, putting that all under so it connects to the top portion so it looks more like a cat eye effect. And I really like the Sephora palette. It comes with a variant of colors that I wouldn't expect to use that I tend to use. And it comes with a little take-along um, tray for you to throw in your bag, which I find really, really helpful. So I'm just going to be putting that all over my under eye. And I'm just using the mirror to see what I'm doing. So then I'm going to be moving back towards the Hepper Solutions palette and using the same um, brush that I used for the under eye, I'm going to be blending that with some yellow on the inner corners of my eyes so I can give a really beautiful gradient effect because she's pretty much a plant. So you know how plants when they grow they have the really yellow um, base and then it's green and then it gets a darker green towards the tip of the leaves. That's kind of what I'm doing. Um, this is just my take on the character and then I'm going to be taking that yellow and then just blending it in with the crease part and then with the fluffy side I'm just going to be blending that in so it looks more uniform. And with the NYX brown eyeshadow in the color Guilt Trip I'm going to be using my Sigma brush and I'm going to be filling out the very ends of the eye so it's getting darker and darker towards the ends of the shadow and I'm just going to be cat eyeing that and then blending that in so it looks a lot more uniform um, and then doing the same thing towards the other side I really like the Sigma brush I feel like it does a really great job at blending um, and it's small and cute and you can take it with you um, but I really like how it cleans up very well And I'm trying to make sure that it doesn't, you know, remove too much of the green as I'm blending it in. So even though it looks a lot messy now, I'm going to be going back and cleaning it up. So with the makeup remover wipe, 
Um, I'm just going to be clearing out a lot of that fallout, which is why I recommend if you're going to be doing the eyes first, I, I recommend doing the eyes first, simply because you can always go back and clean up and you're not removing any like base or, you know, any kind of powder and you're just going to clean up the insides of the eye. So it just looks very, very, you know, put together. And it's always easy to add, but it's really, it's really sucky when you have to like take away and add and then take away and add. So moving on to foundation, I'm going to be using the Better Skin in Coconut and I will be using the Wet and Wild Brush. Um, I like to apply it on my hand because it tends to warm up the makeup for a much better application. And I'm just going to be putting that under my eye and I'm going to be using that makeup to sharpen that lit the makeup and I'm just going to be adding that all along my face. Um, I like this, I tend, I like this a lot. I feel like with this you don't necessarily need um, concealer. You're more than welcome to use concealer if you'd like. I just feel like with this makeup you're not going to need it. And I'm going to just be going along my forehead, under my chin. And of course, this is in fast motion, so I'm not doing it this rough, but I just thought I'd state that because it does look like I'm like going hard on my face. And then just going back to the little areas where I feel like I've missed. And then I recommend if you do looks like this that are dramatic to take a small eyeshadow brush and then just take a little foundation and then just clean up the eye area so it does look more uniform and it looks like flawless and perfect. Um, I'm just going to be going over all the areas where there was a little bit of excess um, eyeshadow and I'm just going to be making sure that it looks even on both sides. And then I do it under my lips as well so that way when I put on the lipstick it looks really really put together and uniform. Now using the Wet n Wild color icon in the color Berry I'm going to be using this to fill in my brows. Um, it tends to get a little messy when you're using a uh, lip liner for your brows, so be really careful. But because my eyebrows are so thin, it was really easy for them to take the color. And I'm just going to be shaping them to what I'm accustomed to. For those of you who are asking, what do I do to my brows, I tend to get them threaded. Um, it, ten it lasts longer and it's also for me more hygienic than getting them waxed and I don't have to get them done as often. I get them done maybe every three to four months. So with the spoolie I'm just going to be going back and shaping them and in the Wet n Wild there is a red and I'm going to be using that to set my eyebrows with the Sephora brush. Um, and I feel like this did a really good job at setting them and it kept the color. You barely see any of the little black hairs that form my eyebrows at all. And I'm just going to be going in with that brush to just pad that on. So I do recommend getting this palette if you plan on doing Quiz and Ivy and you feel like I don't have any of the colors and it's going to be really expensive. Again, this palette is amazing. And using the Wet n Wild eyeliner in the color black, um, I will admit that I was really afraid to go super dramatic with the eyeliner here because I thought I was going to mess it up. Um, I will definitely be going a lot more dramatic. I was just afraid that I was going to either like mess up the line and then I would have to start all over. So I kind of went pretty tame, um, but I do recommend going a lot bolder and thickening up that cat eye. So, um, yeah, I really should have gone a lot thicker, um, but I was just, I was kind of being a punk, and I was like, shit, if I fuck this up, I'm going to have to go all the way back and do it all over again, which I did not want. It was like two in the morning when I started to do this, so I really didn't want to mess up, you guys. So I will be going a lot, I do expect you guys to go a lot more intense when it comes to the eyeliner. I was just... I was just so afraid that I was going to mess it up. And just make sure that it's going, you know, along with that crease that you've made with your darker eyeshadow. 
yeah, I'm looking at it now and I'm so mad that I just didn't go more intense. So then I'm gonna be moving on to the mascara, which is going to be the Colossal Chaotic Lash. I don't really like this brush. I feel like it's so big that you, and bulky that you really can't do a lot with it, especially when you're trying to get those little hairs on the lower lash line. I don't know why this brush is so huge, um, and it's all kind of one size, so I don't know why they did that. That's, that's kind of crazy to me. Then moving on to the lips, I'm going to be using the NARS and Cruella Lip Pencil, and I'm just going to be adding that all over my lips as a base. Um, I really love how this color looks on me and it looks even better when you like, you can wear it. This is one of the few lip pencils that I would wear by itself. It's so gorgeous. And then on top, I'm just going to be adding the Redefined Ruby and this, I love how this looks. It's so moisturizing and it's just, it's an amazing, amazing lip color. And I feel like it looks good on all shades, but then best if you have, um, darker skin like me and then using the Julep colors in wine I'm just going to be adding that towards the middle of my lips and just spreading that out um, so to give the lips a darker more autumn-y feel and I just love how this looks and then going back to using the NYX in the Guilt Trip I'm just going to be dabbing that a little bit of brown on there to give the lips that dark vampy poisony, toxic kind of look. And then I'm going to be doing the blush first um, because I tend to go a little bit heavy with the blush and then with the powder I can kind of just go back and mute it out and that way it looks a little bit more natural because it would be under the powder. So in the powder I use the Nut Brown in C7 and then I just add that on top of the blush. I feel like when you put powder on top of blush, it looks a lot more natural than if you put blush over powder. Um, and I'm just going to be moving the wig, the wig cap back. Which if you cosplay, you should kind of already own one. And I'm kind of just adding the powder there. I keep forgetting that I have to like not put the mirror in front of my face. And this look is pretty much complete. All I have to do now is add the costume and the wig. And this look is pretty much done. And oh my god, I look so super hot and so super sexy. I look poisonous. Um, if you guys want to know what the nail color is, it's from Sally Hansen and it's the Insta Dry in Irish look. And it's just so beautiful. And I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. And Oh my god, Halloween is going to be so dope this year. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching this tutorial. Um, it was something really easy and fun that I thought I could make for you guys. Um, as always, I have to apologize. I don't have the best quality camera, but I thought that I should put something out for Halloween because it is my favorite holiday. Um, and I do have to say that I don't, when I first bought the wig, um, I got it at a discount. And I'm starting to see why I got it at a discount. It's starting to lose a lot of its curl um, and its bounce, but I can always add some more curls in because um, the wig is heat friendly. I feel like the wig really pulls the look together, um, but the bang was just constantly in my face, so I have to like pin it up. Um, but I'll probably just uh, curl it really quick beforehand. Um, I got the costume. I don't know if you can see all of it. But I got the costume at Ricky's and I was able to get it at BeautyCon for $10. Um, right now, I think Ricky's and Spirit is still selling it for $30. Um, but it's still a really great costume. If you want, you can add like glitter and stuff to it, which I plan on doing on Halloween night. Um, it, this was a really fun look. Um, I might add some green around my face, but. Um, looking at it now, I don't feel like I really need to. I just did a really sharp eye and then colored in with some darks and some yellows and then just, it was a really, it's a really simple look. I don't want to make it sound more complicated than it needs to. Um, but I'm really, really glad that this is my costume choice. I was originally going to do Morgan, but I could not find her one piece top and the wings by themselves are like a hundred something and then her costume is another hundred something so i have a whole year to prepare for next year if i want to be morgan 
Um, but this year I'm going as the very lovely sexy villain, Poison Ivy. Um, I am just super glad that it came out so well. Um, I just really have to curl up the wig one more time and, you know, give her back some of her curls because, and, and, and it's long. So I feel like I got this at a, at a reasonable and discounted price for such a long wig that I could add it to. So that is pretty much it. Stay tuned for my next video, which will be um, Halloween cosplay tips. Um, some of you were asking me if I do cosplay. I don't regularly, um, but I do, I do plan on going to conventions at some point. So if I do, these are like my Halloween cosplay tips, because that's really only the time I get to dress up and whatever, but I'm rambling. Um, don't forget to follow me on Instagram, um, Twitter, and I will see you next time. Make sure you guys have a very safe, good God, and happy Halloween, and I will catch you guys later, okay? Bye!